hello everyone. Uh, I'm Jerry. Welcome to our first uh, webinar for part of getting to know and getting to learn all the different aspects of our OpenBB terminal. Um, a friendly reminder, uh, a couple of things. There is a Q&A area of the chat where you can ask questions uh, and we will be responding live for simple questions. Other ones will let um, uh, Yeroon, myself, or Darren answer live as well. Uh, we'll leave some space at the end for general Q&A uh, for 20 minutes if you have something more in-depth you want to talk about or if it's something that we didn't cover. Uh, and this will be recorded, so if you would like to not be uh, recorded either um, log out. There will be a recording of the webinar that will go out with subtitles uh, as well for those that may not be spe uh, English speakers. And this will also be sent out to everyone. And just also one friendly reminder that this is the first webinar in our series. Uh, we'll have subsequent webinars that will tackle areas like the stocks menu and other features in within the terminal. Uh, so you can follow along over the next couple weeks uh, as those get started. Uh, so without further ado, I'll hand it over to Yarun to uh, get us going with getting started with the OpenBB terminal. All right, great. Thank you, Jerry. Um, and hello, uh, welcome everyone uh, to this getting started uh, series. Um, in this series, we're going to really, well, basically just uh, going to teach you how to use OpenBB terminal and really where, where it's shining. So in what areas you can use uh, the terminal, which you might not have yet uh, discovered yet. Um, and that comes into the topics so of first I go over installation. I have a feeling that for most of you, you've already installed software. I'm just briefly going to touch upon it. And then I'm going to go over uh, the structure. So how did we design the OpenB terminal? And well, how can you recognize um, the, those design choices? Um, then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, obtaining and setting API keys. Uh, as you might know, uh, our platform loses uh, nearly 100 different data sources and uh, in this section, I want to show you how we can really make use of all those data sources. I want to show something about um, our ex export features and how you can basically leverage and that to you uh, export to Excel files, but basically any type of file that you'd like. And, and lastly, I want to delve a little bit deeper into scripts and routines um, in which I show you how to really automate your investment research uh, workflow. Um, so let's get started. Um, well, I first want to briefly touch upon an uh, installation. Um, we offer uh, well, quite a little solutions to install our software. Uh, one is in the area of uh, for Windows, we install over Apple, uh, and through these links, uh, which you can see down below, uh, openme.co slash install uh, Windows and install Mac, you can find uh, how to install our software. Um, for the Linux users, we also allow you to install it directly via Python, in which we have a very elaborate guide on how you can uh, install the software. Um, the requirements for, for installing it are not as hefty as you can read. And uh, so uh, if you haven't yet, uh, go to those links and you can um, maybe follow along as I go and explore the, the OpenB terminal. So um, in this section, I will focus on how did we structure uh, our, our software? Um, so the, the first thing that you will notice, uh, oh, apologies. The first thing that you will notice uh, when you first install uh, our software uh, via uh, via the installer is that it will ask you uh, and to install or to log in via your credentials. And this is done via uh, the OpenBB hub. Um, so I want to briefly go over what the OpenBB hub is. And, um, so as soon as you register, what you will see here is um, our, our products. So you will see the OpenV terminal. We see the terminal pro that we are still developing um, with also the SDK and the bot. Well, in this webinar, we're going to focus uh, primarily on the, the terminal. Um, so this is also the section that I will put some bond. And within the hub, um, um, if you were happened to be at our webinar uh, last week, you would have learned that it offers you a lot of features uh, to access um, to access your API keys, to change how the, the terminal looks, uh, how to set default data providers, and how to really customize the charts. And um, so once you would register and you go to the, the, the terminal, you would get access to all of these features, but including um, downloading the software for both Windows and Mac. Um, so that's just brief thoughts upon them, and we'll get back 
uh, to this uh, later as well. Um, but yeah, so as soon as you've uh, logged into the terminal, you will be greeted with this screen. Uh, and I know to demonstrate a little bit for how does this, how, how can you work with this? Um, so this is the terminal, so this is basically what you just saw. Uh, and I'm going to make the screen a little bit bigger and uh, just so that you can actually read it. Uh, otherwise the letters are a bit too small, but for your version, well, it, it might look a little bit different. Um, so here, what you can see is basically all, uh, well, the starting menu and we use uh, a color palette to, to indicate specific uh, functionalities of uh, the terminal. Now uh, you can change these colors, but, uh, these are just the default ones, um, to give you a hint of, of what each are. So, um, what you will see on light blue, um, are commands, uh, those are things that, well, they execute something for you right away. So this can be uh, a candle chart, it can be an income statement, um, all of those types of things you can automatically, um, generate by running some of these commands. So, uh, on the home menu, you will see mostly this very general uh, command. So you can find a command that does something to introduce you to the terminal further. Um, maybe you are looking for support, maybe you're looking, uh, for, for Wikipedia information, all of that, uh, you can do with commands in this home menu. Um, the dark blue colors, uh, re represent uh, menus. So just to give you an idea, if I now type stocks, what happens is it opens up a completely new menu. Um, within the stocks menu, as you can mention, you can find here a lot of information about companies. So, uh, I can tell deeper in this section, for example, here you go to the fundamental analysis menu, where you can dive deeper into income statements, cash flow statements, but also who is the management uh, team of uh, the company, um, or what are the future expectations? What are other uh, analysts expected. So those are kind of the, the essence there. Um, so what else is out, is out there? Uh, we have, um, headers, uh, titles, and which is all represented in orange, uh, yellow and white. Um, those are just there to basically explain better, uh, what, what, what each section is about. Um, and as I mentioned, and you can change the, the colors, uh, as you like, that's all accessible via the, uh, the, the hub. So as you can see here in the settings, you got team style, uh, yep. Yeah. And here you can basically say, okay, I want different colors. Well, that's all possible, um, within the hub, you can really make your own team and you can even share that with your friends. Um, we just, uh, as in general, these are the colors, uh, these are the default colors. That's why I wanted to explain it. And that way, uh, you can customize that. Um, yeah, and I showed you already something about the, the menus, uh, and this, in this example here, what you see is indeed the, the stocks menu where you can find all kinds of information, uh, about stocks. Uh, but we have all kinds of different menus. It can be in the area of an economy. It can be in the area of fixed income. Maybe you want to do portfolio analysis. All of that is there, um, for you to work with. Uh, and then, yeah, now it's time to delve a little bit deeper into commands and, and get more hands on with the terminal. Um, so let me just go back to the terminal. Let's go into stocks. And, um, let's say I want to get data on Microsoft. Um, well, it could be that at first you, you might not even know what their ticker is because uh, the terminal we need uh, functions based on stickers on symbols. Uh, in that case, you can use a search command that we have. And you could search for Microsoft. Uh, now it's, it's certainly a large database and it gives you, uh, information about Microsoft. So of course, Microsoft corporation, our uh, price of location, state sector, industry group, and exchange. But what we are mostly interested in is MSFT. So this is the, the ticker that I will be using. So what can I now do? I can load in the data, uh, this way. And now it collects market data and, uh, and it actually, uh, re registers that I want to have, want to start looking deeper into Microsoft. Well, how can I, um, know that this would work? 
Um, that's how uh, you basically can use the help tag. So uh, this is something to get used to, but basically all of these, uh, these commands have all kinds of arguments that you can use. And with um, a, a dash and an H, you can get more information about, hey, well, what is this command really about? Um, so you can learn more in, in, in depth um, what you can do with the static command. So uh, in this example, we made it uh, easier for you to use the, the commands by automatically filling this um, dispersed arguments. So that's why I could say load MSFT. And, um, and basically this is the exact same. I can say load MSFT or I can say load MSFT. Exactly the same. And with these, so these are arguments that you can add to each command. You will see that every single command that I will be calling will have a similar help menu uh, that you can use to, to specify what kind of data you want. Um, so uh, for example, this command collects historical market data. So that is close prices, low prices, and similar, uh, but which has a default value of well, well, with 20, uh, 20. But I can also say, well, I don't want it from 2020. I want it from uh, 2010. But then I can specify that based on what it says over here, and then it collects that data. Now, this is of course a uh, handy to now check uh, with the candle commands, which uh, creates candle charts, um, well, 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 how that looks like. So what you can actually see here is, is our new interactive charts, um, in which you can see that yeah, this is data all the way from 2010, exactly as I specified. Um, so, and then and the same thing applies to candle. I can also do an, an help tag I can get all kinds of information. Like you can add a moving average, I can add a trend line uh, to this data, and it kind of all explains you in detail how this works. So for me, uh, as I've been using the terminal for so long, it all comes by heart. I know exactly what the, what the command can do, but um, just keep uh, using this help tag, and you will learn really quickly how you can use uh, this command. So just as an example, I can here it says I can add the moving average. So it's at the moving average of 20, because here it says um, I can add multiple separated by comma, so 30 to 60 and I do 120. So what now happens is I add all kinds of moving averages to the graph. Uh, of course, it's quite a long period, so you not really see much here, but you get the gist of it. Um, and yeah, with these charts, we offer, um, because it's interactive, we offer all kinds of uh, different um, tools. So for example, I can decide, hey, I want to zoom in to this uh, this section over here, but then it does so. Um, I can also say, hey, maybe I want to add text. Let's say that this period over here was due to the banking crisis. So um, it could be because, um, the Silicon Valley man collapsed um, or anything similar happened over here. And so then I want to add, um, I want to add a remark here. I want to say, okay, this is due to the banking crisis um, and, and give the insights here. And I can always say, let's say, uh, this is not clear enough. Then let me just change the coloring. And there you go. It now becomes a lot more clear. Um, and these are just a few of the tools that you can use uh, to demonstrate what what the, the the influences of certain things and how you can basically create your own graph. So we also have uh, uh, drawing tools and similar that you can all use. Uh, but maybe what's interesting is that you can also download this chart as an image. And what then happens is that this image is saved and you can just share it with friends or you can use the own research showing that, okay, this is a trend. What we're seeing is that it's decreasing. Um, I very well know that this isn't the, really the exact days uh, of what when the Silicon Valley Bank fell, but yeah, at least it's for illustration purposes, it gives you some insights in what you can do here. So yeah, those are just a few things that you can do uh, with commands. Um, and just to show you also, we have tables. Uh, if I do quotes, I get a, I get quotes from uh, from Microsoft, and which I get 
all kinds of uh, statistics about uh, the company in a table form. Uh, and here are also have options to export. I have options to change settings. Perhaps I want the light team. All of that is available uh, and for you to play around with. Uh, I will delve further in this later, and which also will show the filter option where you can get a lot more insights than, than just this pretty small table. Okay, and let's continue. So we, yeah, I basically did what you see over here, a search for the company, and then I loaded the data in. Um, and I also already showed you uh, something about the help tags. So here you can see the graph, and here you can see what the different moving efforts, how it would look like. Um, yep, that's the, the essence of uh, those, uh, of well, that section of the commands. Um, but there are also um, un uh, universal commands that have been used. Because right now, perhaps you already noticed, um, I, I move around menus a little bit, but yeah, that doesn't really become that clear when you just look at this menu, how you can do that. Um, and that's why we have um, the, the Q commands, but it can also be a dots or it can be quits. Um, that basically takes you one level back. So here it says dots and here it's, it's gone because now I am back at the starting menu. And you can do that from any area. So I can also go into fundamental analysis then you do Q, then I go one that fall back. That's a universal command. That's that's basically how you browse uh, the terminal. Um, we also have uh, the option to to show this menu again. So let's say and um, I just press a couple of times enter. You see that this menu is fading. It's it's not really any helpful that you constantly need to scroll back up. So if you do a question mark, the menu reappears. Um, so that makes it oh a lot more easier to navigate, um, well, navigate the terminal. And then lastly, yeah, I'll also have the, the about commands. And basically what the about command does is it opens up uh, guides to each specific menu. So for example, uh, I was in the stock menu, I type about and it opens up the OpenBB hub and it gives me complete guides on, for example, on the, on the news commands, how we can use that, examples about the uh, load data, um, and all kinds of things. Here you see also a chart that I also showed. It explains to you a little bit more uh, in detail how to work with each command spot using all kinds of different uh, arguments that I haven't used yet. So that's kind of the idea in that area. Um, but you can also do, I can also say about the candle. And then what happens is opens the guide specific to the candle where it tells you, okay, this is how you can set each parameter. What, what does it mean? Um, and it even includes a plot, for example. But all of those capabilities are directly available uh, in the terminal and you can access them from anywhere. So that's why they are called universal commands. Um, and lastly, that's, it's not mentioned here. Um, you can also uh, use the forward slash to go back uh, because that's more of a way to do chain commands. So what I can do actually, it's a little bit advanced, but I can say slash dogs slash FA and it gets me to the fundamental analysis menu. Because basically what, what you read over here is exactly the same thing as I just wrote. Um, so it gives you some idea how you can navigate around the terminal um, yeah, and yeah, basically move around to pick up. So let's then continue. And, and then I want to discuss a little bit about uh, API keys. And because we work with a lot of different data providers, we have a lot of different data providers integrated as well. Um, for example, uh, the FRED, which is a very large economic database containing and consumer price indices, gross domestic product, and uh, interest rates and whatnot on all kinds of countries. And we have the entire database integrated inside the OpenV terminal, as so, well, um, as we'll be showing you later. Um, but also when it comes to income statements, when it comes to balance or statements or ratios or any kind, we work with, for example, financial modeling prep, Polygon, but also crypto uh, uh, exchanges and similar, they're all integrated. Um, but the, the catch, or well, I wouldn't say it's really a catch, um, is that you would need to require an API key. 
And basically, uh, what we always ensure is that every single identified is a free deal. So or whatever the uh, data file you sign up with, they tend to have a free tier that you can work with. So for example, financial modeling prep offers you a lot of financial uh, data for free. The Fred's database requires an API key, but then is completely free and uh, requires no pain whatsoever. And so do the others uh, have some sort of free tier that you can leverage to get a lot more insights in various companies and in, in, in for example, macroeconomic uh, scenarios. So how can you recognize these kind of sources? Um, I think a great example here is the, uh, the oh, what is this? This opens again. A great example is um, the, the fund fundamental analysis manual because this contains a lot of different sources. So for example, what you see over here, if you see, um, well, we actually allow four different sources to be used for this, this financial overview of a company. And for income statements, we even allow uh, more than four, we allow five to six. Um, and that that's allows you to, whatever data source you prefer, or perhaps you have a subscription with one of them, you can actually use that to, um, oh, to access their data. So for example, if I now do income statement, so I now get an income statement from um, Microsoft for the last five years. Uh, this is data from financial modeling per. But what I can do with the same functionality is say source, and suddenly it pops up all the available uh, data sources. So financial modeling prep, Polygon, of Vantage, AVIO Finance. And, uh, and when I'm, for example, in Polygon, well, I get a different uh, a different collection of data. Oh, um, basically, that this allows you to be in use any source, and that's 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 the beauty of it. But uh, in case you're following along, you will notice that uh, this command probably will, won't work, and so won't the the, the default command uh, because it's um, it yeah, two requires an API key. And so, how can you set these API keys? Well, that comes back to the the uh, OpenBB uh, hub again. As you can see, uh, let's just follow along. It tells me, go to the start screen, click on see more. And from there on, it asks me to go to the API key section. So if I do that, I visit the API key section. I will enter uh, this menu where it tells me something about, okay, what are API keys? And here it, for example, says, a at, at OpenV, we don't own any data. And uh, yeah, so that's why we work with all these data providers. We, we aggregate the data, we don't own it. Um, but by setting these API keys, I can uh, give myself access to all of the, uh, the, the, well, the data providers. So you saw, for example, a financial money perp that's over here. You also saw a polygon that's also somewhere down here. Um, all of that, as soon as I register that, that API key, I get access to the data. And for all of these, we, uh, we have here an info tag, for example, an small prep. It tells you exactly what you need to do uh, with screenshots and how to register. Oh, and then it gives you an API key, which you can enter here. So as soon as you do that and you click a save, it will automatically sync with the terminal. Uh, so it might require a reset or refresh of the terminal, but then you can get access to that. And we actually have a menu for this. So if I just go back to the home menu, uh, what you will see over here is a keys menu. So let me just enter this keys menu. And what you will notice is that it, it takes a little bit of time to, well, to check the status, to see if everything works. And once everything um, is checked, you enter uh, the menu and it will give you insights on, okay, what, uh, what's, what's, what keys passed, what keys failed, and, uh, and what's are not defined. So for example, if I now would like data from Binance, I can't because I haven't set that key yet. But if it's for Alpha Vantage or for Financial Modeling Prep or Brett, I do have this key set, so I can access all functionality that says this is from Brett or this is from uh, Financial Modeling Prep. So yeah, that gives you kind of an insights in uh, how this works. Uh, 
and now that's just fits it's uh, a different menu if you're more understanding in this area um here you for example see um, that the required spreads to access this functionality or for example but here the cons consumer post index it also requires spreads so if you haven't set that key this won't work but i can now say okay i want the uh Consumer price index for a series of countries. So let's do the United States. Um, let's grab another one. Let's grab, well, I happen to be from the Netherlands. So let's grab the Netherlands. And here you can see uh, the consumer price index for each of these and uh, how they have, um, well, how they have moved over a large period, actually. So it goes all the way back to 1994. Uh, I think what's interesting to see is to add in Japan up in here um, because Japan uh, has a very steady uh, uh, inflation rate. This is exactly what you see over here. You see that um, United States, Australia, and, and I think and Netherlands in particular has uh, really skyrocketed in terms of inflation, whereas Japan is completely stable. Well, kind of the insights that you can get as soon as you unlock more and more API keys directly from uh, up from the OpenVV hub. So just a few of the insights that you can get once you unlock more and more data. Um, with that said, uh, not all of our, the, the, the sources necessarily require an API key. For example, this is a source that has a whole lot of uh, financial data as well, and that is really accessible. Um, so what I can do here I think this is an interesting thing. I, I, I can touch upon this later as well. If I now do the depth commands and let's compare it to the efforts, um, what this shows is the uh, the depth to GDP ratio from Greece and the efforts for all the OECD countries. So that's a list of countries, uh, includes primarily also the European Union. Um, and what you can see over here is that the the, uh, the 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 depth to GDP ratio for Greece has has skyrocketed compared to the uh, efforts. It's quite an interesting insight, and this is also where one of our presentations is uh, about, which you can find also on uh, the hub. Uh, just to show you inside uh, the hub, and then we go to presentations. You can find four presentations, uh, including the one that, that we. That we're covering right now, so you can always read more about this uh, daily too. Um, that goes about analyzing the Greek debt crisis because uh, this presentation also shows you all kinds of insights in um, what happened in, in Greece uh, during the financial crisis. Uh, and as you can see uh, right here, this is the same graph that you see up here. Uh, that this highlights that well, in uh, Greece it isn't going so well in terms of the debt to GDP as they have far more debt than they are outputting. As you can see with a very high number that this is right now. Yeah. Just a lot of information uh, and a lot of things you can view with the OpenBB terminal. But let's continue. So I showed you how to exit the API keys. I showed you how to verify them. And as you saw this screen over here, um, and I also gave you some insights and how to access these API keys. So it doesn't, of course, not only apply to an economy menu, but uh, if I visited the, the fundamental analysis menu, I would get the same kind of insights where I could get a whole lot of uh, financial ratios directly into tables that I could export and similar. All of that is available. But let's now continue to uh, our exporting capabilities. I think if you are more used to working with Excel, or you have, um, or you want it, um, to use our data as form of a larger model, then you are able to do so because we offer a lot of exporting capabilities. So um, basically almost all commands will have the export tag. And if you uh, perhaps just spotted it already, but when I earlier showed the load commands, that also has an export tag. So just to show you, right over here. Uh, and basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to export the data that you retrieve. So let's, let's, now, let's now go big and let's say I want 
data from Tesla, Nords, should it companies been around a bit longer, Apple starts 98, 1990, how long has Apple been around? And let's say I want to export it to an, 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 well, it's an XSL file, but it's an Excel file. And here you see the, the file being saved to the OpenBB user data folder inside the exports folder. So this is a folder that is automatically generated if, uh, whenever you uh, install the OpenB terminal. And basically it's empty at first, um, but it allows you to export any kind of data. So let's now just uh, visit this folder and you can find this inside your, well, for, for Mac, for example, inside your users folder, and that's the same for Windows. Uh, and then in, in your user, and then it's the OpenBB user data folder. And within the folder, you can find all kinds of configuration files, but we're now going to focus primarily on exports. So I just exported the file and you can find that exact file right here. So if I now just open this file uh, and I open up and the desktop so that you can actually see what I'm looking at, uh, you can see that this now has, uh, produced, uh, what well, a data set of um, data from all the way back to 1990 for Apple. So as you can imagine, this is a whole lot of data. Uh, and that's ultimately exported uh, when you use the export tag. But oh, that just gives you some insights in what you can do with that functionality. That of course goes far, but it has a lot more uh, applications. And let's say I go into fundamental analysis and let's say let's export ratios, but let's do a CSV file this time. Well, in the same folder, um, you will find now this file. I will open it and I will drag it here. And you can see all of these ratios um, directly exported to a CSV file, which you can look at and see how um, Apple has been growing over time. Just, just to, yeah, to get some insights as well. Uh, and of course, you can do this for any company, so you can extend that much further as well. So um, some additions that you can do is uh, here, I just said CSV, but I can actually give a name to the file. So I can say XXX, and so now I send it to an Excel file, but let's also say I want a sheet name, let's do it, let's go income. And, I'm, and now I want to do the same for balance, and I also want to export this well, as a balance. And what now happens if I go back to this folder, I got file named Apple, and then let's go over here. You see, here you go, you got the income statements um, for, uh, yeah, for Apple and the balance sheet statement directly in Excel. And as you can imagine, you can extend this much, much further. I could add stock data in here as well. I could have added all kinds of data um, well, for you to use. Um, and that's basically our exporting capabilities um, in which yeah, you, you can work with the data from one, well, but other ways as well. Perhaps you are looking to load in that data via a Jupyter Notebook, uh, as you are used to working in Python with it. Then you can do so directly. Um, of course, we also have the OpenMV SDK for that matter. Um, which I encourage you to explore as well once you uh, sign up for the hub. So now let's continue. So I've shown you how to export, I've shown you how to uh, define a sheet name, um, and I've shown you where this data resides uh, inside the export folder. And you can basically read more about this on the hub where you go more in detail uh, as well as in our documentation, um, which you can find. And let me just show you that. But inside the hub, if I go to a terminal, in here you would find documentation about each section in which I can, for example, click on use it. Uh, I can get a basics introduction, but I can also find guides on exporting and importing data sets. So here it tells you exactly okay, where I can find the data, what kind of data is in there, and how does this command work? Well, as you can see, it can get quite extensive. Uh, it can even export all kinds of charts as well. So now let's 
continue uh, with the last section. And I think this kind of all brings, uh, this brings everything together. And that's working with routine scripts. So um, perhaps some of you have have used uh, RStudio, have used Stata, maybe SPSS, uh, and even Python scripts would uh, suppose. Um, what basically um, these scripting uh, tools allow is to run a series of commands in rapid succession. So but what you just showed, what I just showed is that I was exporting to in, uh, an income statement, I was exporting a balance sheet statement, but can also add that into a script and, make, and automate it. So I just have to run the scripts and then it automatically uh, sends the balance sheet, income, and the cash flow, ratio, stock data, all to Excel for me to analyze further. Well, that's basically what the OpenVB routine scripts are. Um, Whereas uh, our studio state and SPSS are more focused on statistical analysis, we want to extend that further into financial analysis. So how can you access this area? Uh, well, if I now go back to the old menu, you can find right here, you can find the commands that are related to scripting. So we have, so uh, for now, I just want to focus primarily on the exit command. So, um, it says here, uh, use exe.example to run an example. Well, let's just do that. Uh, so you, you can get an idea of what happens when I do this. And basically what now happens, all kinds of charts and tables pop up because the, the example uh, routine um, it is set to do so. It's set to run a series of commands um, automatically. And as you can see, it's pretty quick. So. What you see here is for Apple, you see the annual earnings estimates of for the next, well, for the next, what is it, four years, five years, and what are the expectations based on the series of uh, analysts. And it's the same with what are the analysts uh, expecting in terms of price targets. It's an entire chart dedicated to it. Uh, but also, who is, who is management, uh, including links. So I can actually click on those links and go to, uh, go to Google to find more about uh, well, Timothy Cook, for example, um, but yeah, also just general Kindle charts. And all of this is automatically uh, rather because I run the scripts. And, and if you type about XC, you actually get to the guides dedicated to this. So here you can find a guide dedicated to scripts and routines that explains to you, okay, what are scripts? First, uh, a brief introduction, and then it shows you exactly how you can run these. Uh, and run specific, um, uh, well, maybe all scripts and explaining in detail what needs to be done here. So, um, I now want to take it a step further. And because we have, um, what I showed, I put the presentation based on the, the Greek financial crisis. Um, we also have a script related to this presentation. So as soon as you log into your account and you go to XE, and you use the file command again the help command so you would get the insights here um what you will see is you will see scripts that you have uh, defined you will see default scripts and the default scripts are these three at the bottom so what i can do uh, if i want to analyze the grief of with debt prices i can run this command and it starts collecting data and exporting everything to an uh, an actual excel file so let's just, just take a moment to let this run. Oh, it's done. I go back to the exports folder and here you go. We've got a debt crisis and um, file. So what can you find in this file? Um, for example, you can see the debt to GDP ratio. That's also what this shows with the OECD. Um, but you can get an insight to pay hey, how does uh, Greece uh, economically compare it to other big countries like the United States and Germany or France. I can see the nominal GDP balance and defense spending and employment rates, uh, which is actually quite interesting since the, uh, the, the value for Greece has been growing by a whole lot. Uh, as you can see, almost a fourth of the population is employed. Well, that's actually quite, uh, quite high. Um, but all of these insights you can get uh, by running the scripts. 
and the entire and the entire presentations with I so I encourage you to need have to look at it goes more in depth why what you see uh, makes sense. But yeah, these are just some insights that you can get from uh, these presentations. Um, and in future webinars, we will also cover them more in detail. Now, another one I want to uh, have a look at is the financial due diligence one. And uh, I think a lot of you will find this pretty interesting. This is a presentation um, that we've, we've also created that is dedicated to doing financial due diligence. So it's based on a, on a valid source. Um, that explains in detail what, what is required to do proper initial diligence. So the presentation over here, what you can find in this presentation is an entire uh, um, the diligence on Coca-Cola. So here it explains in detail every section. So it's well, thing good to know that it goes about, uh, I mean, it is about uh, stock prices, management ownership, revenue, profit, profit margins, and future expectations. Well, this entire presentation also has a routine attached to it. Um, and this routine requires an input. And basically what this means is that Ian, the presentation itself was about Coca-Cola, but I can really run anything. So well, what's a big competitor to Coca-Cola? Well, Pepsi. I happen to know that that is BAB and that's the ticker and I can let it run. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, let's explore a little bit what's, what's then generated. So I already ran that for Coca-Cola. So if I show you this one, you get an, an insight. So, hey, what happens if I run financial diligence uh, file? So that gives you a whole lot of market data. But uh, Coca-Cola has been around for a long time, as you can see. Um, dividends, stock splits, and the management, uh, shareholders. Market capitalization, income stable bills. Well, you get you get to just a whole lot of information directly inside an Excel file. Now, what's the beauty of uh, of these scripts is that um, with this you can really um, well uh, automate the process and do a proper competitor analysis. So, as you can see, Pepsi is now done. You can see it's scripts finished. I can now open this file, and what you will see is Oh, the same set of data, but now it's done for Pepsi. So in a couple of seconds, I can do a fully fetched uh, analysis uh, of well, two competitors and I can expand this how I want. That's the essence of uh, routines. And the beauty of it is that uh, these are defaults, but of course you can create your own. And in the app, if you go to OB Terminal again, go to the my script routines you would find the default ones so for example this one tells you exactly what kind of commands are around it but also the ones that i design myself so i can click on create new and make one that i want to create so here is one is that the com that, that, that does a stock comparison oh, this happens to be pepsi and this happens to be uh this happens to be coca-cola and once you save this it automatically and that gets convert or converted into a file that you can find over video. So I can run that exact file that I just showed and perform a stock comparison. And I think another great tool that we have is you can overlay this data as well. So with historical data, Pepsi. And I mean, let's change the colors a little bit. And what now happens is that this data is now overlaid on top of these other charts. So this is Coca-Cola. Now let's see how that looks for Pepsi. But well, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that they are highly correlated with each other as they move pretty much the same, they pretty much have the same trends. But well, that's just uh, the power of routines and that's really how you can automate a lot of your research. Uh, I could have chosen any kind of company or really expanded this routine how I wanted uh, and yeah, I really encourage you to, to have, have a try it at yourself and see what you can come up with. And feel free to share that with us and uh, so that we can also maybe share your routines with, with our entire audience and, and how they can really extend their investment research workflow. And I think um, 
I want to keep it at that. I kind of only showed you all of this and how you can execute the squares. Uh, and I, you can always find this presentation on the OpenBE Hub, so you can always just look at it yourself again and learn more um, how you can make this work. So I want to leave it at that and now open up the Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to share them with me and I'll have uh, me and Jerry or Darren will be answering all of them. Thank you. And we've got a first question on uh, demonstrating the dashboard capabilities. Um, the dashboard capabilities is currently really a work in progress. Um, we do have some dashboards uh, that that I can I can show you. Uh, if you still have it, there's a dashboard section. But this is still a very important and now it's a very experimental section. Um, but let me just see if this actually works it's still running yeah it's yeah like you can create all kinds of free that's dashboards with our uh a tool let me just check if this actually applies uh if it actually works and does something for us um yeah it actually does and it creates a like, candle charts with all kinds of statistics so this is all made with streamlets and you've already seen a lot of other projects that are being built on top of this i think it's Interesting to show this as well briefly um, within the SDK section. And uh, I haven't thought about this yet. We actually have the. When do we not? We actually, there are uh, several projects that, that are using the SDK to build their own streamlit uh, tools. And this is a good point to, to add. If you're going through and using the OpenBB terminal, we do have a request a feature. Um, in our website and hub. So if you're working through something or if you find uh, something that doesn't quite work, let us know. Um, it's really important for the community to you know be involved and let us know if you see something that's not working or if you have a good idea. Uh, we always go through all of the feature requests and they're constantly a part of our process of how we uh, improve and work on and iterate on our product and various uh, in the terminal and for the SDK. Yeah, I, I read something about because uh, we've seen the portfolio menu I can briefly touch upon it. I don't want to go too in detail. Um, if there's a high demand, then you can always hold a separate session on this. Uh, we do have a portfolio menu that is dedicated to analyzing your portfolio. Um, and basically what the entire essence is of analyzing a portfolio is that you want to see if you, uh, how would you compare it to some sort of benchmark? So I, I just loaded in an example portfolio, um, with this for example, on the show, you can see all kinds of trades that this example portfolio did. And then I can basically compare do the performance comparison and see how I performed versus some sort of benchmark. Oh, well, it is an example. So this portfolio happens to outperform the SP performance by a whole lot. Uh, but yeah, as you can imagine, since it's an example. Um, but yeah, uh, I encourage you to visit the, the, the about guides. You have an entire guide dedicated to portfolio, but also to portfolio optimization that goes more in depth on how to work with uh, what this portfolio menu. So yeah, I want to keep to the depth. And if there's more people interested in this, uh, feel free to share that with us and we can always host a new session dedicated to this menu. Uh, I think we had a question or two on um, yeah. loading, and we can also cover this. We have a, a future webinar coming up for uh, the stocks menu in specific, but if you wanted to show quickly stocks for um, other international countries, I think the question was on India. Yeah, we we do have access to uh, we do allow you to gain access to and um, different stocks. So let's uh, I can actually where we in there in there, and we do allow you to access uh, stocks from from different countries. And so you can find here you can find uh, stocks on India. Um, it depends a little bit on what exchange they are located. Uh, we we have a whole lot of data for the companies that are actually listed on uh, on American exchanges. For others, it, it can be a little bit more tricky. Um, but I definitely encourage you to, to search with the, the search commands, uh, which has all kinds of parameters, and see how that works with with your um, um, stock. Um, for example, we we have options to. Uh, also use specific exchanges, um, but that tends to also mean that um, for the fundamental analysis, you get a little bit less data. So that's why I, I encourage you to start with this search uh, 
for companies in India and how that uh, stacks up and, and how, how those companies work together. Yeah. So I'd like to thank everyone for attending and I'd like to mention again that uh, in two weeks we have one that we from stocks. So if you uh, liked uh, the thing that we focused on and the, the financial due diligence, I will go far more in depth in that session where we kind of explore an, uh, an actual company and really understand, hey, is this actually a company I want to invest in compared, uh, compared to its competitors? So stay tuned for that. Keep our socials, spell out and the check and, and sign up because uh, I love to see it there.